Teamless Tuesday, and we have absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. This is one of the craziest weeks of injuries I've ever seen. Um, look, for a while there, we saw Nathan Cleary's injury first. We thought, all right, cool. Let's go by Mitch Moses. He got knocked out. We saw Pierre Kura get knocked out. There was word around that Isaiah Yo might have an injury. That was all fake, I believe, as well. Mate, it's a tough teamless Tuesday. Let's jump right into it. I can see we've got um, a big group here already, which is awesome to see. So um, I'll get some of those questions as you go through too. But first things first, I want to jump into the Roosters and the Panthers. And let's jump straight to the Panthers here. Let's go straight to the Panthers. Yep, absolutely need to get a drink. Um, I'm starting off with a coffee first to spark up. Then I might get a beer next. Um, but yeah, look, Panthers side of things. Oh man, Brad Schneider comes in. Now, Brad Schneider, I, I sort of thought, oh, maybe we'll get Brad Schneider instead. Maybe that can be a pickup for us. It's not the case. He's about 450K. Clear he's only out for sort of two to four weeks. It apparently could be at the lower end of that as well. So I'm rethinking my trade Cleary strategy here and thinking maybe I hold Cleary. Maybe it will be two weeks instead of four weeks. If it's that, but then there is that buy coming up as well. So it probably ends up being about three weeks. It might be more palatable, especially with the cash cows we have coming up in this teamless Tuesday as well. Uh, Mohammed, good to see you, mate. Doing well, doing well. My team has 17 players, so I'm pretty happy. Unlike you, Peter, 14 players with trades. <laughs> oh, mate, I, I I don't know what you can do. Um, send me your team on Instagram. You've got a special case, so I'll try and give you some help there. Um, yeah, the buy for the Panthers, absolutely. Yes, that's coming up very soon as well, so that throws things in, out a bit. But... It could be a three-week out for Cleary instead. That's that's the thing here. And this year, nah, Hines on a bye week. Exactly right. If you don't have Hines, it's very hard to go buy Hines right now for Cleary just because you have that buy next week. Um, Dom Young, is he a pickup? This is a really interesting one. So we'll have a look at the Roosters' side of the ball first. Um, for the Chooks, it's a pretty similar team list to last week. There's two big changes. One, Luke Cleary comes in for Sandon Smith. I was kind of looking at Sandon Smith thinking he might be a cash cow if Kira is out for longer. Kira is obviously not out for longer, so we don't have any worries there. Second thing is Terrell May comes in to start, and Lindsay Collins is out for a while. So, you know, Terrell May owners, we can be pretty happy about that, but hopefully Lindsay's doing all right too. Um, quick question here on Cleary to Dylan Brown. We'll talk about the Parramatta halves pairing when we get to the Eels, but I don't mind this trade at all. It frees up some cash, lets you upgrade elsewhere. You're looking sweet. Uh, 16 players, damn. And we'll talk about Pia Kura as well. We'll get to him on the Broncos side of things too. How's it going, Hanea? Good to see you, mate. Um, round 4, 2024, remember just one of the worst rounds in fantasy footy. Maybe we need to make an edit, like a little uh, documentary-style edit or something like that for <laughs> this round because it's absolutely cooked. It's It's been horrific. Um, throw my captain option. This is actually really interesting. So Lindsay Collins is... Uh, a guy who he, he eats up some pretty big minutes for the Roosters. Terrell May, let's have a look at this bench because Connor Watson, he can eat up some minutes there. Gus Crichton can step into more minutes as well. I, I don't know about Terrell May as captain, especially with that little calf injury he picked up last week. It's a bit risky for me, but I can see the upside of it. Uh, do I delete the app? Nah, nah, stick with it. Stick with it. Also, you're always here. I always see you on the lives too. So uh, I want you to stick around, mate. <laughs> I'm suffering inside. Most of us are suffering on the outside, so that's uh, that's fair enough, man. And thoughts on Vinny Brody? Hey, look, he's he's one of those cash cows where you just got to keep an eye out for him. One day he'll get named, and that'll be a great day for us, Pete. Um, let's go through these team lists here, though. So on the Roosters side of the ball, yeah, look, Tupanua, he's there. If you have Tupanua, you're probably holding on to Tupanua now. So my big piece of advice here for this week would be if you – have uh, players who have the green dots next to them. Stick with those guys. Stick with them this week. You need scorers desperately this round. So Tupanua, he survives another week for you. Um, saying that, on the other side of the ball, uh, the Panthers, look, I wouldn't be going out and buying guys like Taruva, Isaac Tungo, Tail and May. I'm looking at those guys and just thinking they don't get as much ball now that Cleary's gone. They might get more ball, but it's lower quality ball. Panthers' attack could be a little bit worse. You can go with Dylan Edwards. They can struggle a little bit without Cleary. Um, Brad Schneider, I think he's a bit expensive. I wouldn't be buying him personally. Uh, Mitch Kenny, he had 80 minutes and a try last week, but only scored about 42, 43 points. So I'm looking at him and just thinking, I'm not fully convinced 
on that performance. Uh, I would like to see more points in a, in a game where a hooker scores a try and plays 80 minutes. Um, but he's still not a bad option. He's not a terrible option. Luke Garner gets to start. So what's happened there is Scott Sorensen. He's out for about four weeks. Um, means that Luke Garner steps in. He's at a pretty good price, but they have the buy coming up. I wouldn't be buying Luke Garner either. And then Isaiah Yo, he's in. If you saw any reports that he was out injured, those are completely false. Um, I believe he's starting. I'll let you know if anything changes. Um, then on the bench, yeah, Liam Henry stepped into a big role last week. He was really good last week. Um, I don't know if I'd buy him. I'd probably need another injury from Penrith for, to, to pick him up, but still kind of interesting. If you started with Liam Henry, you're pretty happy there. Maverick Gaia, yeah, one of you guys mentioned in the site here that uh, Gaia gets a start. Yeah, 17 jersey. I don't know if it's going to be a big minute role, to be completely transparent. I, I think the starters will play big minutes. But at the same time, I mean, look at the bench. Dane Laurie, he doesn't play any minutes. Eisenhuth, Lee and Henry playing through the middle. Maybe Gaia gets some edge minutes. Maybe he gets some run through the middle. We'll see what happens there. Um, it really depends how this game goes. Next game here, Bunnies and the Bulldogs. Big game, this one. Um, so for the Bunnies and the Bulldogs, yeah, look, on the Bunnies' side of the ball, they have been a disaster. And I think it was a good mood, a uh, good move to keep Dean Hawkins into the team. Uh, you give him one week last week. It's a tough game. The Chooks absolutely dusted them up. I, well, I'm i keen to see sort of what he can do again this week. We see Jack Whiten come back. I know there's a bit of an injury cloud over Jack Whiten. Still a little bit of a worry. He did um, miss part of training yesterday, I believe it was. So just keep an eye on that if you did have Jack Whiten. I don't think you would. Quick question, would I rather be Joe Chan or James Maloney in real life? Uh, probably probably Maloney. He seems so carefree. He seems super relaxed. Kenny DeBlaze is a great trade. Kenny or Lusick, it's still such a coin toss. They both had really low-scoring games last week. Kenny just had the try. So I, I'm probably leaning, I don't know, Paramount are going to be dodgy. Maybe Lusick. Maybe he does more. I think he's got a bit more creative upside um, in that para team. Yet yeah, no, no Havili. Cook, yeah, Cook is interesting here. So let's go through this team here because, yeah, we've got the, the back line. I'm not that interested in this South Sydney back line. If you have Latrell Mitchell, you probably have to stick with him as well. I wouldn't be moving off Latrell yet. Um, In the forward back, yeah, if you've got Tavita Totola, you got to keep your green dots. Keep your green dots. You can hear me say it about 100 times today. But if a guy is playing, you keep them in your team and you keep rolling. Cam Murray, he picked up a little bit of a niggle. It's not necessarily picked up. He's had it for a while now. Uh, I don't think there's anything really to worry about there. I think he'll keep going through, but apparently it's something he's been managing for a while now. So um, if you're a Cam Murray owner, don't worry about it. I wouldn't go buy him though, just because he did hobble out of training the other day. It was yesterday as well. Um, rest of the pack, yeah, Jacob Host, not interested. Chi Cam, Duncan, Shakai Mitchell, uh, David Wiley. Yeah, nothing too much there. On the dog side of the ball, let's have a look here. So um, we'll go back to Cleary in a sec, guys, and there's a few Cleary questions. Dog side of the ball, um, got Karaz, keeps his center spot. Karaz is a beast, but nothing's changed. He's going to have up and down games. The Dogs are not a great team this year. They're, they're better than people think because they, they played a tough Parramatta side and they had a tough game against the, the Sharks to start, and then they absolutely destroyed um, their game last week. So, yeah, the Dogs are dogs not as bad as people think. I think they're pretty good defensively as well. They've got a bit of that in them, um, especially with Burton and Hutchison, you know, and the addition of Crichton there too. For Hutch, I'm keeping Hutch in my team. I was planning to trade him, but now with all these injuries, we have to keep the guys we have. So Hutch stays in my team. I'm not that upset. South Sydney can leak a few points, so maybe Hutch will uh, jack a try or just score another 37 like he did last week. Um, for the forward pack, yeah, look, Max King goes. Liam Knight's been going all right. I'm not that interested. Reed Marnie had a great game last week. Uh, kick out, Preston, Jamin Salmon. So you got to keep Jamin Salmon. Keep your green dots. That's easy. Kurt Mann, Sam Hughes. I might be relying on Sam Hughes this week in my 17, so I'm really, I'm really light. Keeney's not playing this week, so it means that I have 17 players exactly with my trades. Um, so be it. Sam Hughes, Jamin Salmon, Drew Hutchison, they are my bench. It's 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 dire times, man. Like I've got Ellie Katoa and Pappenhausen sitting there, not doing much for the Storm. So, yeah, I don't mind that. Would I buy Josh Curran this week? Probably not going to buy Josh Curran. Um, he's he's going all right, but I think there are some better options that we can go through as we roll through. A lot of questions coming through about Cleary. So, yeah, we did cover Cleary at the start. I'm probably going to cover Cleary a couple of times, to be honest. So, yeah, Broke Boy, Trader Hold, Cleary. Uh, and a few of you other guys have done it as well. So, Lewis, uh, I've done Cleary to Turbo and Kenny to Tsalangi. Uh Yeah, yeah. So, 
it's interesting. Um, Cleary could be out for a small period of time. I was going to move myself up the screen a bit here so you can see me with the questions as well. Yeah, Cleary could be out for a small period of time. Um, he might be out for maybe only two games, then the buy as well. So it could be a shorter period. I'm probably still selling Cleary, but at the same time, if you're not using the money and you can trade some other players out, for example, then maybe hold Cleary at this stage. I was firmly in the sell camp, but I'm just seeing all these other injuries come through. I'm starting to think maybe he's a hold. Um, we're going to have to look more closely at Pierre Cura's injury as well. That I don't know how serious that is. If anyone knows how serious Pierre Cura's injury is, that will help us as well. And yep, green, exactly, Blue Rocket. Green, green dots are a luxury right now. Does KPP keep his minutes? We'll talk about KPP when we get to the Knights. Uh, I think he looks like an 80-minute player, which exciting times. Hold Iroh, absolutely. you got to hold Iroh. Um, I'm just going to hop down here. Let's see on drive home. Uh, Jahu, good to see you, man. Jahu's been super active, actually, in the um, Discord as well. So always good to recognize a, a familiar name. Some mid options. Mid's tricky. Mid's tricky. We'll go through. As we go through these teams, we'll go through some mid options. But um, I think this is a week to just play you guys like Jamin Salmon, Sam Hughes, and just survive rather than buying a top mid. Um, let's keep rolling through these team lists here. So I'm just going to jump into the next one here, which is Broncos and Cowboys. And for the Broncos and the Cowboys, yeah, not too much is changing. I mean, so the Broncos have had a big change with uh, Tristan Saylor coming in. So obviously you've got um, Reese Walsh out of the team. He's about four to five weeks. I would sell Reese Walsh instantly if I had him. You got to move him on. Tristan Saylor is another one. He's a bit like um, a bit like our guy Brad Schneider. In that he's about 450k. He's a bit too expensive. It's it's a hard one to hold on to. Um, Jesse Arthurs, Tony Staggs, Selwyn Cobo, Dean Mariner, Ezra Mam, Adam Reynolds is back as well. So that's um, good news for the Broncos. Good news for any of those skill players you have for the Broncos. Their attack will be a lot more direct and a lot stronger with him back. Um, a few questions about the Titans as well. Joel Liff, Aaron Clark. Let's have a look at that team list when we get to it. Um, but there's definitely value in that Titans team right now as well. Um, so going through the forward pack here, yeah, Fletcher Baker, Jensen, Jaden Hunt. It's probably only a small injury, I expect, from Pierre Cura, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, this is good. This is good. I'm glad to have helped Munt. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, Walsh was always a little bit dodgy with his scoring profile. I didn't, I didn't think he'd get injured. That was, that was a surprise to me. Um, Pat Carrigan. So here we go. We're talking about the middle options before it's the first one here is Patty Carrigan. Patty Carrigan, while Haas is out in particular, is a gun. He's not in my team right now, but would I get him? Absolutely. If I needed a middle, which, you know, maybe I do, and maybe I will go with Carrigan. We'll see how we go. But Carrigan could be that guy that really blows up over the next couple of weeks. He scored 66 last week, played 80 minutes. It's absolutely massive. Here we go. So Pia Kura, a month, yeah, four-week recovery from a sprain ugly. I thought it might be something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's um, – Pia Kura might be – I don't know. Pia Kura is so cheap, so I almost can't bring myself to sell him. The problem is the Broncos play so early in the round every week that he's not actually useful for you in a loophole scenario either. So it's tough. It's tough. Um, for the Discord, I will put it in the – actually, I'll just show you. Like This is the Discord here. So we've got um, the open channel. Here, I'll just – open channels here for everyone. A um, bunch of trade talk from the guys. We've got all the injury chat as well. A bunch of that news comes through there too. Um, we've also got upgrades, so you can upgrade to sort of having more, more advice and that kind of thing. You can upgrade to drain, Brainstorm. Or assistant coach. This is something that's brand new. Um, but you can upgrade to a level where we can do video calls and talk through strategy and that kind of thing and help with your team as well. So the link for that is I'll just get you the link and put it in this in the chat here. But yeah, anyone can join that. There's heaps of channels that are you know free from the get-go as well. So yeah, feel free to jump in there. Um, we only opened that sort of earlier this week. I popped it in one of the comments under a video and a bunch of you guys found it. So <laughs> We're rolling now. It's going to be a big channel for um, all the fantasy chat. But look, jumping back to the Broncos here. So how do you upgrade? Um, if you just go to the Welcome Newbies channel, or if you just DM me on there as well, I'll I'll tell you. Um, uh, yeah, just DM me directly, and I can, I can sort of fill you in. Um, let's see. So can you look at my team? We do more of the coaching stuff on Discord. 
as well. So you can upgrade to those levels where we can we can sort of give you more one-to-one -one help. Alternatively, we make heaps of video content that's also um, hopefully super helpful too. Um, Appy, yeah, Appy's pretty hot. Um, help top 2K, mate, that is prime. That's a really good position right now. It's been a chaotic start to the year. So if you can nail this week, you could be top 500, maybe even top 100 if you absolutely nail it. Um, so let's keep going through these teams. So Broncos side of things, look, Xavier Wilson went well last week. I wouldn't be going to buy him. Uh, but at the same time, he's, he's a bit of a beast. And across the year, I think he will get more and more minutes. On the Cowboys side of the ball, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty regular team, right? It's what we're used to seeing for them. Um, Backline, Val Holmes is a gun. We know Val Holmes is a gun. Uh, this is not a bad matchup for him either. The Broncos are a bit rudderless right now. So I wouldn't be buying Val Holmes myself, but at the same time, he's a bit of a weapon. Uh, Tommy Deard in town said, yeah, look, Reese Robson, he's been pretty stable with about a 53, 54 average. Mm. We'll talk about RTS as well, George. We'll get to that. Um, but the rest of the forward pack, yeah, Tamalolo not getting any minutes. He's going to be a cash out at some point. Uh, Finifuyaki. He had a 40-point game last week with a try. So you take that try out of his game, it becomes like a 23, 24-point game. It was pretty dicey, but at the same time, we have to start him this week. One of the good bits of news here is that Ruben Cotter, he was taken off precautionarily last week. He comes back into the starting side this week. We are all good. Limp Biscuit, yep, Limp Brisket, sorry. <laughs> Cotter startable, absolutely. I'll be starting him this week, and you sort of have to. A um, couple of captain questions coming through as well. We'll get to those when we get to those teams too. Oh, actually, sorry, I almost skipped over something. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I saw Thomas McKayley and got a bit excited. I reckon he's a, he's a PPM weapon, but he's not in the team, so don't worry about that. Uh, Dragons and Seagulls. Yeah, so I haven't checked out these teams too much yet, but for the Dragons side of the ball, hmm, yeah, same back line as we saw last week. Um, Kyle Flanagan, he has been in decent form for fantasy over the last week Actually, it's not really form is it get that big score though 46 points really happy with that score to try is he going to keep scoring tries every week no he's not will he go well this week i don't think so i think he's gonna have a stinker but at the same time we are stuck <laughs> with flano if you have flano you're starting him it's a tough situation to be in um jdb on the bench absolutely yeah so he's in that 15 jersey it doesn't make a lot of sense to me but obviously they view him as a pure prop so what's happening is, yeah, he's, he's, he's a pure prop in their eyes. He's rotating with Frank Molo and Blake Laurie, and they're viewing Eisenhuth as that lock. I don't trust completely that Eisenhuth will get all the lock minutes because you've got Fatal Marinat and Hame Sally there as well. And between those two, they rest the, the props. I think Fatal Marinat will get some lock minutes. I think Eisenhuth will be lucky to play 50 minutes. So, yeah, I'm not that intrigued. Is Tommy on the extended bench? Tommy Talau, he's, he's floating around. He's lingering. He's in that 19 jersey. Keep an eye on Tommy Talau to come in. <laughs> if you buy him, you deserve what you get. Dan Oates, can I panic now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely can. It's a, a pretty stressful time right now. Um, Liam Henry, decent minutes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's he's, he's going well. He went well last week. He got like 49 points, so Yeah. You and Aitken, it's only a few weeks left he has. I think it's only two more weeks before Lemuelu comes back. He had the spot at the start of the year. And the GOAT, Tommy Talau, exactly right. This is a good rank too, so 265, only fielding 16. I'm not that high on RTS. I personally wouldn't be buying RTS. Uh, and then with Pierre Kerr and Chan, both not playing this week. Okay, second for Cleary. Yeah, I don't mind KPP. I, I wouldn't be getting RTS though. I think you can make some better trades than that. And Wishart, yeah, Wishart killed it, killed it last week. Trevins for Talau. I mean, look, Talau's the best player in the game, but I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd drop Trey Evans. You've already lost 100K, so it's a tough one. Um, let's keep looking at these teams. So for the Manly side, yep, yeah, Tommy Turbo. Tommy Turbo, I don't mind Tommy Turbo this week at all. And he is currently sitting in my traded in list. That isn't guaranteed to stay that way. Definitely isn't guaranteed to stay that way. But right now, Tommy Turbo is the guy I've bought. Um, He's just got a good matchup here with the Dragons. He's been in really good form. He's on the average about 48 points, but I still think Tommy Turbo is playing the kind of footy where he's going to have those explosion games. And he's been unlucky with a couple of referee calls that have pulled plays back here and there. 
Uh, he'll he'll have those big games very very soon, and I think this is going to be one of them against the Dragons this week. Uh, the rest of the back line, yeah, look, Ruben Garrick's a gun. Cola showed us that he's a bit up and down, and you're just going to have to cop that. Um, Paseka, Croker, LA. I mean, let's actually, sorry, Brooks and Trey Evans. We're talking about that. Trey Evans actually hasn't lost that many kick meters to Brooks, so Trey Evans could still be really good this year. He just hasn't had any of those attacking plays and hadn't, hasn't had many of the run meters he normally has as well. So I think um, at some point we'll be buying DC. I think it's he could have a big game this week. He could definitely have a big game this week, and he could be one of those guys we're talking about next week. So if you want a bold, bold move, I'm not doing it myself. So that's the caveat. But DC is the kind of guy that you're getting a big discount on. Admittedly, very high break even, so you can also wait on it too. But he could really blow up in this game. Um, Paseca, LOE, Croker. Yeah, Croker on the watch list. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 all right. Olakowatu, Ben Trebojevic, disaster last week. And Waddell's still on that bench. It's a, a four-forward bench. The sooner we can stop starting Ben Trebojevic in our fantasy teams, the better. That's that's sort of how I see that. Uh, it's it's a bit tough. And then, yeah, Olakowatu is a bit of a gun. He'll probably kill it in this game too. But Luciano Lelua and Jaden Sewer aren't any slouches either. Um, I think Luciano could be a, a guy who overperforms his price too, but not by enough that I'm going to be buying him. A um, lot, of, lot of questions about Jaden Campbell as well. Is that the next game? Yes, it is. All right, cool. Uh, Jaden Campbell. <laughs> there we go. So a few of you guys putting in messages about him. Look, for Jaden Campbell... It's a, a really simple equation. So he's a 45 average when he starts at fullback for the Titans and plays decent minutes. So you've got that 45 average. My theory coming into this season was that the Titans be a bit better this year and that Des Hasler has coached some very good fullbacks in the past. So guys like Turbo, guys like Ben Barber, he's coached a few of these guys um, coming through. And I think you'll get a lot out of Jaden Campbell. I also think the fact that they are going to be struggling a bit is going to get a lot of ball thrown Jaden Campbell's way. So, yeah, Jaden Campbell at that price is a great buy and probably a guy that you can keep as long as he is fit. So I don't mind that. Um, David Feeder extended. Yeah, for Feeder, uh, is he on the extended bench? So David Feeder is in the 18 jersey. I think he probably plays this week. Um, it's I don't have anything concrete for you to be honest, but I think Dave Fafita is probably going to slide into the team this week. I don't think he'll play full minutes, so I wouldn't be going and buying him. But if you do have Cleese Haas, or you're looking at Cleese Haas, or you're in a draft league or something like that, I think Dave Fafita comes in. That's my feel. Did I buy Bitcoin? Yes, I did, but not enough to be retired right now. So that's devastating. All right, Joel of Pod, Joel of Pod, Peter, you've been uh, you've been pushing this one. Do we like Joel of? Um, I'm going to do an analysis on these guys, but I'll show you just quickly how I do it. And this is, this is, um, something you guys, I mean, there's nothing better than just watching the games, but at the same time, if you just want to look at the stats, you can get a guy like Joliffe here and you can see all of his scores across his entire career. And we want to see, let's see minutes over 50. So he hasn't played that many games over 50 minutes, but when he does do that, He's getting a 47.9 average. If we take minutes out and we just go position, when Joliffe plays lock only once, he's done it. He, he scored 52 points. Could be interesting. I mean, 34 tackles, 105 meters gained. That's not too bad. Um, Joliffe is really interesting. If we go with a guy like Aaron Clark instead, who, you know, I, I think was interesting, but he's on the bench now, so it's a bit tougher. Um, but if you give him minutes over 50 and you put him in a position of, of say, Let's go lock. Yeah, 55 average when Aaron Clark plays 50 plus minutes at lock. So to me, Aaron Clark was the really interesting player there. But at the same time, Joliffe has a bit of chops as well. The question is, how do the minutes break down in this pack? So let's walk through this pack because Chris Randall is the first one to point out here. You have Chris Randall and then you have Sam Verrills. Sam Verrills will play a decent number of minutes at hooker. Oh, sorry, that site link, that is footystatistics.com. Footystatistics.com. Um, I think I normally put it in the description of videos as well. But um, yeah, footystatistics.com. So yeah, Chris Randall, he's going to play hooker. Sam Verrills will play a lot of minutes at hooker. What happens a lot of the time is Sam Verrills will come onto the field. Chris Randall will move to lock. Now, 
the question that you have to ask yourself is, is Jolip going to stay on the field after playing lock and move to prop? Maybe like a guy like Palacia goes off, or is Jolip going to leave the field at that time? If he leaves the field at that time, you might have two stints instead. You might still get like 50 minutes, but the uh, the big upside there is that you get a 60-minute Jolif at lock. Now, if Aaron Clark was starting at lock, or if they change it on game day, I think he's much more likely to pay big minutes at that lock roll. But at the same time, Jolif, look, he converts points pretty well. So if we go back to Jolif, we can actually see his career points per minute. So minutes, oops, minutes, 36 average minutes, 34 average points, right? So he's converting minutes to points, basically. So if you get 45, 50 minutes out of Jolliffe, uh, you've got 45, 50 points. What does Jolliffe cost, actually, guys? Um, I, I don't have that off the top of my head, but someone drop in the comments what Jolliffe costs. Um, but anyway, that's, that's sort of how I look at that. So how do the minutes play out? Please Haas, he is a specialist edge, so that's not too bad. Sam Verrills, yeah, Joe Stimson is a specialist edge. Joe Stimson could easily get, like, no minutes at all in this game. So you basically have Sam Verrills, Isaac Liu, and Aaron Clark coming off the bench. It's a tough one to call. I'm happy to wait a week on this, personally. I'm going to wait a week and have a look at how this plays out for the Titans. I think it's very risky to go and make a buy right now. And, yeah, here we go, 518k for Jolliffe. It's... Big price to pay as well for a guy who, I don't know if he'll get the minutes, but if you like the pod, go have a crack. Ranked 141, by the way. Let me know. Delete the app. He's taking it all. Big man on campus. Watch out. <laughs> Teddy on Turbo this week. This is so hard for me to answer because I've been on Turbo. Sorry, Teddy. Teddy all year. Um, Teddy or Turbo. I think Turbo has the big game this week. Uh, I think Teddy could have the bigger season than Turbo. Uh, they both play Origin, most likely. So, yeah, I'm looking at that. I'm thinking I'd probably get Turbo right now. A bit cheaper. A bit cheaper and um, good matchup this week. Get it at the points right now. I'd be going and doing that. All right, let's go to the Dolphins side of the ball here. We'll do a proper analysis on the Titans as well and buy, hold, sell. That goes live at um, 7 a.m. tomorrow. Buy, hold, sell video. Um, but on the Dolphins side of the ball, hmm. Hamaso, Asako, Avrilo, Farmworth, Bostock, Nikarima, Katoa. Okay, so Katoa is the first guy we want to talk about here. And again, Katoa, he kicked for 474 meters two weeks ago. He averaged 250 kick meters last year. Land of the Good Times has exactly said it, the kick meters, yeah. Now, we have to ask ourselves a question. Is the increase in kick meters based on a change in role for Katoa this year? Is he playing that genuine seven role this year? Are they trusting him with more? Is it a maturity thing where he's coming to his second season? They're giving him more love? Or was it a case of Cody Nicarima getting hurt in the 15th minute and them just not having that backup half? I think Donahue played a bit of half. Max Plath was around it as well. It was a bit tricky. It's hard to say either way. I mean, I was looking at Katara in the preseason because he is so cheap. He's so cheap. He's just over 400K. Um, I don't know if I can do it with confidence. I think because we have Blaze Talangi at Parramatta now playing six for a decent period of time and he's a lot cheaper, I would rather go for him over Katoa. That's where my head is, but yeah. And yeah, JMK not kicking too, Katoa kicking better. Yeah, Look, I think Katoa will, will take an uptick. I just think there are some other guys that um, I would I would sort of throw in over him. Um, Luca Selpiakura for $2, apparently. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I would be selling Pia Kura, maybe, maybe. Actually, it's only, I don't know, it's only four weeks. It's only four weeks, Luca. I'm probably going to hold Pia Kura just because of the way my team is set up, but I'm open to selling him as well. It's just, he, he is serious value. So when he comes back, he'll probably play 80 minutes and probably be that guy again for us. So actually, I'm switching on this. I think Pia Kura is a hold. I'd be holding Pia Kura. And telling Cash Cow of the Week, absolutely. Bonus that he plays for Parramatta, who are going to win the comp this year. So he's he's cheering. Um, I say that with uh, an 01 para jersey here from when we lost the grand final in 01, and an 09 grand final jersey when we lost that grand final too. So, you know, I'm looking for my first para premiership, but one day, one day we'll get there. Um, let's look at the fins here. So other than Katoa, we've gone to the forward pack. Marshall King, he's been a bit up and down so far. Legler has been really good to start. If you start with him, you're very happy. I wouldn't be going and buying him personally. Um, Ellie, uh, sorry, you and Aitken. So Lemuelu is back really soon. Um, 
he's back uh, in in sort of two or three weeks. So Ewan Aitken probably doesn't keep that starting spot. A bit if you're on it, Max Plath at lock. If you're in a draft league, he's available at half. Um, 2022 lost jersey. I've got that here. <laughs> but yeah, he's available at half, Max Plath. So you've got a guy there who could potentially go really well. It's just a risk because Ray Stone's on the bench and he comes on at lock as well. And you don't have a lot of, I mean, these are all middle forwards like Ray Stone, Mark Nichols, Kurt Donahue, and Josh Kerr. It's it's pretty dicey. So I wouldn't be getting Plath. All right, next game here we got is the Warriors and Knights. So Warriors and Knights, RTS goes to fullback, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't think it means that much. Nickel Clock Stad should be back next week. So I'm not that excited about this. I would be skipping that pretty happily. Uh, Watanzo Lesniak, Rocket Berry, Pompey, Montoya, Metcalf, Sean Johnson. Johnson went back to form after scoring like 26 two weeks ago. Uh, he's probably still too expensive for me to be interested in, but pretty cool. Um, sorry, just quickly on Turbo. Yeah, buy. I think Turbo's a buy. I think Turbo's one of the top buys, especially at wing fullback. I think he'll kill it this week against the Dragons. Um, for the forward pack, Vanua Blake, Wade Egan, Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, Kirk Capewell, to Harris. Harris has played 80 minutes, two of three games this year. I think he had a HI in the one where he didn't play 80 minutes. So Toe Harris isn't a bad option. Uh, I just worry about you know his age, and he sort of picked up a few injuries last week, um, so last year that, that held him out of minutes. So he he will sort of degrade as the year goes on. I think and get a bit rested in terms of his fantasy fantasy performance. Um, on the note of middles, does Fodder Waker get 60, 70 minutes? I don't think so, but I think you can afford to wait one week. Wait one week, see how the rotations work for the Titans. Don't try to guess because we have a new coach in Des Hasler. So anything we know from the past actually doesn't matter at all. And Keenan Palacia, he's new to the club as well. There's just a lot there that we don't want to uh, be doing. RTS, yeah, he's going to go back to center. I think he will. But a um, bit of talk that, yeah, he played at center for New Zealand. Doing Manu at fullback. Yeah, look, we'll, we can, we'll see. I think CNK is going to be the long-term fullback. All right, now let's have a look at the rest of this team. So for the, the Warriors, you've got Wade Egan back, which I don't know if some of you guys were on him. That's cool, but I don't think many of us are. Um, for the Knights, if you have Kalen Ponga, hold the faith on Kalen Ponga. He had a good start last year, last week. Um, cooled off a bit there. I'm not on Pong. I was all preseason all about Teddy over Pong, but it's a it's a dice roll. It's a coin toss. I can't claim that much credit. Like Teddy's just had some better games. Pong has had a few plays called back. It could just as easily be Ponga over Teddy, or it could be Turbo over any of those guys. It could be Latrell, you know, whatever it is, right? So if you've gone with Ponga, You've lost a bit of money so far. I think this could be a game where he shows out. And the Warriors are a good side. They're a good defensive side. But I still think this could be a game where we see Prime Ponga jumping out of the scorecard and having a big game. So, yeah, you're pretty happy there. Um, question on, yeah, so Leo Thompson suspended. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Dan Safidi comes in. I'm not interested in that. Their rotations are pretty meh. We'll go into the Knights forward rotations in a sec, actually, because I don't want to jump back. Um, so Tom Jenkins, Dan Gagai, Brad and Best, and Ari Tuala. Now, Gagai is still that top center, which is really cool. Um, there's no value in there, so I won't be getting Gagai, but at the same time, he's he's looking good in real life. He's he's an absolute beast. Brad and Best, I'm keeping an eye on as well. Brad and Best is getting very cheap. He might be available for 450, 440, 430k at some point. He goes in some very hot runs at times where Brad and Best Give it like two or three weeks, we can make that move. Um, a lot of questions about Hines as well. For Nico Hines, I wouldn't be buying him this week. He has the buy next week. It's it's really tough to do. Is the video at 7 a.m.? Yeah, so we do the buy, hold, sell video that comes out 7 a.m. Um, I've got a new guest on that too, so Biz can't make it this week. I've got uh, Jay-Z coming on instead. Not the Jay-Z, but one of the Jay-Zs. <laughs> He's having a killer year. He's on Karaz and a few other guys. Really good top 1,000 ranks, so he's killing. Hosking to Hines. Um, I wouldn't be buying Hines. Yeah, after the buy. After the buy, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I like that move. I like that move a lot. Okay, let's... And should we prioritize non-Origin players? Yeah, I mean, you can still get the Origin players, but in the next month or two, we'll stop looking at them as much. Let's go to the rest of the Knights pack. So let's have a look at this, because the way the Knights pack plays is really interesting. So Safidi and Safidi are starting there. Leo Thompson is out of the team this week, one week suspension. 
Um, you've got Adam Elliott there. He plays big minutes pretty much no matter what, but he had a quiet one last week. If I had Adam Elliott, I would keep Adam Elliott. Jaden Braley, a few questions about him. Uh, if Jaden Braley gets a start, then we can look at buying him, but let's let him lose some money first. He can lose some money for us, and then we can get him nice and cheap. Now, Frizzell, Kai Pierce Paul, Brody Jones, Dylan Lucas. The four edge forwards that we have available here. Dylan Lucas is the 18th man down there. Um, Dylan Lucas came on last week off the bench. He played edge and Frizzell went to the middle. What that tells me is that their plan is to keep Kai Pierce Paul in the team for big minutes, potentially 80 minutes like he has the last two weeks. Kai Pierce Paul cost 549k. So for me, Kai Pierce Paul is a no-brainer buy. And if you need an edge back rower, 5.9k, it's a good price. You can go and do that. So yeah, he is currently a guy that I'm looking at for one of my trades. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at Turbo. I'm looking at a few of the halves that we're going to talk about, some of the Power Boys as well. Um, but yeah, Kai Pierce Paul, really good option there. Cliff Star, ranked 79th. That is prime. You're doing well, mate. And you'll go up the ranks as well this week with 18 players. So absolutely cheering. All right, now let's keep rolling through these teams because then we've got the next game which is the Sharkies and the Raiders and yeah a couple of questions about the Paraboys Tigers Paratigers is the next game so we'll go through those in a second as well but I'll just run through these teams so firstly for the Sharkies yeah Will Kennedy's gonna all right so first thing to note here crazy Kai Kyle Iroh he comes in now Talakai has started the year fantastically well he has been on fire to begin this year Talakai has not been dropped He's playing edge back row, which is crazy. It's crazy. Uh, and yet, Land of the Good Times, like you said, Nikora is back next week. Nikora is actually a guy who I've got my eye on. In two or three weeks, Nikora will be nice and cheap. So keep an eye on him. But for this week, Talakai plays in the back row. Iro plays in the center spot. We've got quite a few. Look at this bench, right? We've got quite a few guys missing. So Dale Finucane's out. Um, he's hurt. We've got Toby Rudolph. Out as well. We have Hamon Uwale out, and I believe someone else as well is out. Jack Williams, they've just desperately moved him back into the middle rotation. So they've just said, you know what? You're playing good in the middle. You're a prop this week, I believe, <laughs> which is going to be tricky for him. Now, Taylor, is he a buy? No, he's not a buy. He's not a buy at all. He'll be out next week. I wouldn't be doing it. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. He keeps the spot somehow, but I don't think so. Nico Hines. I'm captaining Nico Hines this week. I'm super stoked on, on having him. If I didn't have Nico Hines, though, I may not buy him this week because they have the buy next week. It depends on your team, but for me, it's probably not worthwhile. I think you just have to take the gamble on another captain option. On the forward pack, yeah, Talakite McInnes. So McInnes is one where some of you guys were on McInnes. I wasn't super high on him in the preseason, but at the same time, People were sort of writing him off as well. So he's he's a points per minute guy, right? So every minute he gets, he gets a point on the field. Um, this team looks like he'll probably get 60 minutes. I'm not going to go buy McInnes necessarily, but if I had McInnes, I'd be very happy and I'd be holding on. So, And if I needed a middle at the price he's at, I think it's about 695K. Uh, yeah, you can do much worse than Cam McInnes. So if you got on McInnes, good, good job. Bit of luck with injuries, but um, you're going to get rewarded this week, I think. For the Raiders, Jordy Rapana. Oh, good. Who's on the Rapana boat? Um, yeah, no, he killed it last week. 61 points. Stoked with that. We've got James Schiller coming in. So um, Albert Hopawati, he had an injury cooking. He had a minor burn on his arm or something like that. Uh, it's just it's just that kind of week. Uh, Tomoko, Seb Chris. Yeah, Seb Chris is a guy everyone's looking at. You can do worse than Seb Chris. He's, he's sort of that 35 average guy. He's dual position. Not bad for cover if you want to go cheap. Uh, Xavier Savage, Ethan Strange. I'll probably start Strange in this game just because Sharks are missing some players. I think they all defensively maybe struggle a bit. Uh, obviously, Strange, he needs his attacking stats. So that's a big one for him. And Raps without the demerits is fire. Absolutely. Rapana, my boy. Spot on. Seb Chris or Jaden Campbell? Campbell, 100%. Only advantage of Seb Chris is that he plays center. So you got that center coverage as well. McInnes, 80 minutes, 80 tackles. If he got 80 minutes, he would make 80 tackles and he'd be the best player in fantasy, 100%. Um, and Hines, yeah, so this is actually really worth noting, Crusader. Uh, when you've got your fantasy players, you actually want those guys who don't 
Like, even if they don't play that well, they still score well in fantasy. Nico Hines had a shocker. Gun player. Gun player, but an absolute shocker against the Tigers. And you come out of that game and you think, wow, he played bad. He played really bad. 50 fantasy points. I'm I'm cheering. I'm cheering with that. That's that's absolutely fine. Um, let's go into the forwards. Actually, sorry, Fogarty. If you guys are asking about Fogarty. Fogarty's a gun. Uh, he's been overperforming a little bit for me, but I thought he would be about a 55 average this year. So, yeah, if you want to get on Fogarty, he's pretty reliable. Uh, he won't get a 60 average like he has been so far, but 55 average you could roughly put down there. Brooks is him, wants to know. Really bad. Really bad. With a lot of questions there. Would you rather Carrigan or Tohu or Smithies? Carrigan easily. Tohu is second. I wouldn't be buying Smithies at all. Corey Horsburgh on the extended bench. In fact, I'll show you. Horsburgh, 19th man. I wouldn't be buying Smithies. No way. Absolutely no way. Um, Sharkies have injuries woes. Yeah, Sharkies do have some injury woes. Um, let's have a look at the rest of this Raiders team, though. So Josh Papali'i. So what my theory is, is that when the Raiders are full strength, we're going to see Josh Papali'i hop back to the bench. We're going to see Horsburgh start at prop next to Tarpane. We'll see Smithies stay at lock as well. Hudson Young and Whitehead will be the starting back rowers. And we're going to see Josh Papali'i and Hosking coming off the bench, as well as Tom Starling, and then one of these guys like Mariota or Sami Solo. So that means that the minutes are going to be dicey for the Raiders. I wouldn't be buying any Raiders forwards right now. Uh, I just wouldn't be doing that. They're, they're super dicey. Um, all right, guys, don't spam the same question too much. I'm not going to answer now. If, if you spam Ollie, I can see you. I'm not answering because you spammed it too many times. Um, but the answer is probably Brown, I'd say. It depends what your team needs. Let's go into the next team here. Uh, and how bad? Kotrick. Kotrick, 22 jersey. Just when you needed him most, he disappeared. Now, when you watch Avatar, animated series versus the um, live action, what do you reckon? I, I think nothing matches the animated series. Because that movie they made like 15 years ago, that was a shocker as well. But look, let's go. Tigers and Eels. This is probably probably the biggest game for fantasy of the week, just in that there is so much going on in this game. So first things first, we saw Blaze Talangi come in last week. He played center. He was on fire in that game, really explosive, ran straight over turbo to score a try. He now gets the job at number six jersey. There is a lot, a lot that you can do with this six jersey at Parramatta. Uh, especially next to Dylan Brown. He's going to have a lot of chances with his ball, with the ball in his hands. Um, so he is really interesting at a really cheap price. I'm probably going to be buying Talangi. Uh, I just think he was a beast last week, and I think he'll be really good. Tigers is not, an, not a bad matchup either. Tigers were good last week, but in general, are they going to be that rock-solid defensive matchup? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, yeah, Talangi, awesome. Dylan Brown. Dylan Brown averages 63 points when he plays without Moses. Will he average 63 now? You're getting a big discount as well. He's dropped in price quite a bit too. So yeah, for Dylan Brown, um, I think he's yeah he's a good shout right now as well. Uh, this question on loophole. I made a video on loopholes. If you go to my channel and search for loophole, I made a how to loophole video there as well. So yeah, easy there. Um, then next up here, Clint Gutherson. Now this is dicey, but I'm just going to read the stats to you and you can tell me what you want to do. But Gutho averages 60 when he plays without Moses. So the, the theme here is that all these guys sort of step up a bit when Moses is out. And you see Gutho and Dylan Brown really taking the reins. It's not great for Parramatta. They don't play better footy when Moses is out. But these guys really do step up when they get this chance. So it's worth keeping an eye on. If you want Gutho, you want Dylan Brown, the data is in your favor. But just, you know, I'm not certain on Gutho, for example. I think Dylan Brown, though, he is value right now as well. Let's see this. So here we go. Gutho, late shift to 5'8". Blaze to play fullback. Maybe, but Gutho is such a good defender at fullback. He's so good on the high ball. I think we have to grind out some games at Parramatta. Uh, Brown take control of the game with Moses out. Do you reckon him and Blaze will share the load? Uh, I think Brown will take more control. And I think Blaze will play a real ball running sort of role and be very active with the ball in hand. If anything was to go by last week. Lane train. Lane train. I was going to trade lane out until... Uh, you know, we got stuck with him with all these injuries. So Lane's in my team again. Yep. Uh, Hopgood or Carrigan? Carrigan over Hopgood for the next four weeks. And then Hopgood over Carrigan longer term. 
Brown and Turbo this week. Hosking to KPP. Yeah, there's, there's some good trades there. Would I pick Ponga, Gutho, or Campbell? I think Campbell is the safest option. I think Gutho has some appeal. Um, Ponga, I probably wouldn't be buying Ponga right now. I think he's got a bit more money to lose. But yeah, Ponga, Ponga is the best player of the three. It depends what you want. That's a really, that's a really um, inconsequential answer, wasn't it? Uh, look, what would I do? I'd probably go Campbell. I think the the value for Campbell is too good. Pikara is a sell, absolutely. Um, I'll go through the rest of these questions, but yeah, sell Pia Kura. I'll go through these in a sec. I just want to go through the rest of the Parrot team. Um, bit of talk that Bryce Cartwright could be out for a while. Uh, so that might mean that uh, Kelma Tualangi comes into the starting side. Uh, it also might mean that we see Ryan Madison get some minutes in the edge as well. Yeah, Kelma Tualangi could be a buy. I just think we have so many other buys available right now where you sort of have to get Blaze Tulangi if he stays in the starting team, but at the same time, yeah. Joey Lustig, if you have Joey Lustig, stick with him. 28 points last week was not good, uh, but I'm sure he'll bounce back for you. He's a starting hooker. He plays 80 minutes. You're all good there. Sean Lane, we're stuck with him. I was thinking about selling him. I had to do some analysis, but now we're stuck with him, so we'll see how he goes. On Tiger's side of the ball, if Fayetape is not that fantasy producer, I wouldn't be buying him, even though he's base price. Olam, a lot of people are asking about Olam as well. Would I buy Olam? I think Olam's a really good buy for the Tigers right now. I think it's it's great for them. They've got him. He's very stiff in defense. He's very effective. He's a professional. But he won't be that guy for fantasy, is my view. Uh, I just don't think he's that fantasy producer that you want. So I'd be skipping him. If you don't have Lockie Galvin, you have to go buy Lockie Galvin. And this is the last week you can do it without paying an absolute dime for him. So, yeah, go get Lockie Galvin if you don't have him. Must have. Must have. Um, Dream Buller, Aiden Caesar, meh, meh. All right, Coruscant. Coruscant, not a bad shout at all. He's pretty expensive, though, so you're not getting a big discount on Coruscant. Um, at the same time, I do like him as an upgrade. If you have Harry Grant in your team, you might want to get that top hooker. The problem is Coruscant is playing like an origin hooker right now. He's the best hooker in New South Wales, so I think he probably plays origin if he wants to um, and if he keeps up this form. Isaiah Papali has been all right. Bateman's getting a little bit cheap. Worth keeping an eye on for future weeks. Uh, and the rest of the team, don't go by Alex Seafarth. Just don't do it. Don't do that. Don't do it. I really don't want you to do that. Um, let's go through some of these questions here too. So bringing Nappy as a hooker option or snooker option. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Corusau. Everything was running through him. Um, then would you rather buy Finifuyaki or Talani this week? Um, Talangi, Talangi, yeah, I think Talangi's gonna be the best scorer. Sorry, I think I might have said different things throughout the podcast. I think hold Piakura for most teams, unless your team is perfect and you've avoided the injuries. I would hold Piakura. Um, who goal kicks for the Eels? So Gutho is the backup goal kicker. Um, so I think it'll be him. Uh, John Bateman, yeah, he's getting cheap. Don't get him yet. We need to see him turn around, but I don't mind him. This is not a bad strategy. Uh, I don't mind keeping spare cash. It means you can upgrade next week. So I like that. Thoughts on Dream Buller. I don't think the Tigers will be as good as they were last week every week. Um, he scored a double. I, I'm not that interested in him for fantasy. I think Jaden Campbell is just as good as him and a lot cheaper. <laughs> Come back, drop 30 and get injured again. He Piakura really has hurt us in fantasy. So yeah, I get you. Um, what do you think about Cleary and Kenna for Appy and Turbo? These are good trades. Yeah, I like these trades. Similar to what I'm thinking about doing as well. Um, Teddy or Fogarty as captain. Uh, I wouldn't captain Teddy against um, the Panthers, even when they're under strength. So maybe Fogarty, maybe someone else. It's it's hard this week. It's really hard. Let's go with Cardi. He might have an injury. I heard he has an injury, so just keep an eye on that. Follow us on Instagram. I'll post the latest stuff there. Would you rather fit for Yaki or Talani? Talani for sure. Cardi injured, yes. I don't know why they've named him. Appy or Robson to cover Grant. Appy has more upside. Robson has been a bit of a plotter, but Robson's pretty safe. It's your call. I have Robson myself. I'd probably choose Abby. Appy if I was buying this week. I feel like Brown and Blaze is like strange and foggy type role. No, no, no. So um, Brown doesn't kick much at all in the regular para team. Brown's a running six. I think they will split things a lot more evenly than you think they will. Let's go in homes with Cleary's money. Yeah, I don't mind that. You're upgrading your outside backs. 
Premises has been on fire to start the year. So that's pretty hot. Buller, better options out there. Reynolds or DCE, I would skip both those guys right now. I think DCE might be a buy in a couple of weeks' time when it gets cheaper, but not right now. Yeah, sorry, I've changed my mind. I'm saying hold Piakura. Hold Piakura unless your team is perfect. But if I had a perfect team, I might sell him, but um, I'm probably going to hold him. What do you think about Cleary and can I? Yeah, that question was asked. Good. Hands on the extended. Yeah, he would be. Yeah, number 20 jersey. I thought Hands might play six, actually, for a while there. Tommy Turbo against Dragons, absolutely. I have way too much money in the bank. Yeah, it's tough with all these injuries. Picker not a sell, absolutely. Standard Frank will choose to swell up. And da, 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 Broncos themselves. Yeah, it could be less. Yeah, hold Picker. He's cheap. That's the problem. So you want to hold him to him. Um, what do you think about clearing? Can I? Yep, yeah, talked about that. I've got Grant. Would I sell Galvin? No, I would not sell Galvin, Pete. I uh, was 15 minutes behind and live responded to the television comment. All good. Appy and Robson. He covered for Grant. Yeah. I'm going to jump to the bottom because I think we some of the same questions. Clearing Keeney for Dill Brown and who else? Mm. 717K in the bank. Um, drop some comments, guys, on who you would buy under 717K. I think Kai Pierce Paul is a really good option around that price. I think Coruscant is a good option around that price. I think you could, I, I really think you need to go get Blaze, Blaze Talangi as well. Who am I looking at trading this week? Well, Blaze being named has screwed me up. So I was looking at, um, oh, originally I was looking at Turbo and Moses. Then I was looking at Turbo and uh, Kai Pierce Paul. Now I'm probably looking at Turbo and Blaze instead. So we'll see what happens. But to be honest, Cleary might even be a hold with Blaze emerging now. Like, I, know, I need to do some more thinking. KPP is Kai Pierce Paul. Uh, Knights back row. I played 80 minutes last two weeks. Campbell or Gutho or Rapana? Mm. These questions are hard. Uh, Campbell is probably the best value, but Rapana has been really good lately. Gutho probably has the biggest upside of the three, so it's sort of your call. Uh, Cleary and Moses to Brown and Turbo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. It's tough that you have Cleary and Moses, so I'm sorry <laughs> to see that. Uh, let's keep looking at these. Galvin for Wong. Good trade. Yeah, buying Galvin and selling Wong is a good move. Uh, should we hold Cleary if we have Heinz? You could. You could. Uh, you definitely could, but it's sort of up to you with your team roster. Like, uh, there, there are some decisions that are surefire yes or no questions, and there are decisions that um, are a bit of a dice roll either way. So a lot of the time, I'm going to give you my opinion, but... I get, let's say, let's say if, if I was, if I'm a really good fantasy coach, I probably get 60% of the calls, right? Whereas a really bad fantasy coach might get 40% of the calls, right? So I can say what I think you should do, but I still get it wrong 40% of the time. So um, if you think differently to me, then um, do it, do it your way. But I'm thinking about holding Cleary. I'm, right now I have him as sold, but I'm, I'm reconsidering that position because of Blaze being here. Campbell or Rapana? I'm going to have both really soon. It's a coin toss. Uh, I think Campbell is the better fantasy scorer. I think Rapana is in a better team. So up to you what you want to do there. Korean Pia Kura for Appy and KPP. Yep, I like that. 15 this week is tough, but uh, you're making good trades there. Captain McInnes, Turbo or Fogs? I actually really like Captain McInnes if you have him. Uh, if you're Captain McInnes, yeah, you're pretty happy there. Could you wait one or two weeks on Campbell? Titans are doing terrible. Yeah, for sure. So I'm keeping Keeney this week just for this reason. Um, I'm trading Joe Chan instead, most likely. I think Sean Bloor is taking over that spot. And I think Campbell re-injury risk is there as well. So potentially Keeney comes back. We'll see what happens. But yeah, you could wait a week on that. Better to hold Cleary and trade Pikura to Carrigan. Mm, this is a really hard question. Um... It could work out either way. Cleary could be back really soon. That's the thing. It could be a three-week injury, including the 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 buy. So uh, it depends if you have faith in Pierre Cura. I think Pierre Cura is really good personally. Um, I, I think he'll he'll have that run where he averages sort of forty-five points for you, and he'll make big money. But you could also go buy him back as well later on. He's not sitting the world on fire. Yeah, I don't mind this move. I don't mind this move at all. My overall rank. I'm in the four thousands right now. Um, so we're working our way up. 
I'll be in the top 100 next week. So we'll be sweet. Uh, we got clearing key for turbo. Do you think Gutho? Yeah, Gutho will rack up some kick meters for sure. May a decent captain choice. The only risk there is the calf injury. Other than that, I think he's a great captain option. Yeah, could be could be big. Could be really big. Um, should you run a wing fullback short to pick up Blaze? Ooh, ooh. If you can play 17, I would play 17 and try to make the trades to get 17. But if you have to run one short in some way, then so be it. Um, yeah, I don't mind that. No one's got the trades left. Exactly right. But as long as you build some depth, you're all good. Go for Sean Lane it is crazy talk. Finifuyaki or KPP? KPP. Oh, I think Finifuyaki is a bit sus. Uh, I bought him last week. Scoring, He's going to score some 20s. KPP is a much bigger scorer. We can pull back option this week, including guns. Turbo this week, I think, is the guy. Um, yeah, I like Turbo. Could I wait a week? Yeah, for sure. But he's going to be more expensive. That's the other thing. Blaze over Hammer, for sure. Blaze over Hammer, for sure. Blagler and Olakawatu. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not massive value, but they're both pretty good scorers. Olakawatu is probably a season keeper. Blagler is not a season keeper. Cleary, Keeney to Galvin Campbell. Yeah, it's fine. A lot of cash in your bank. You have to get Galvin, though. I would personally go Cleary and Keeney to Galvin and someone better than Campbell. Maybe a Tommy Turbo just to get the points. Get Campbell next week. Should I Captain Ponga or Murray? Ponga is brave. Ponga is brave against the Warriors. I kind of like Ponga as your captain, actually. It's risky. So Murray's more safe. Ponga's got the upside. I kind of like Ponga out of those two, but it's totally up to you. Should you bank one mil? Yeah, you could do that. Just make the moves next week. Cleary and Chan. In which half? Hmm. Dylan Brown is is interesting this week. He's at a good price. Fogarty is really safe. He's a bit more expensive. Yeah, you're pretty set there. And then can you like link the Discord? Yeah, I'll um so Discord is here. So Discord's here. I'll just show you guys how to use that as well. Because I'm actually finished up soon. So Discord has put that in the chat. You can see that there. So for the Discord channel, um Getting started, this has a trade talk section where we're talking trades. Everyone's talking about all their, their different options. Um, big community. I think there's like 200 people here or something like that. So we're all talking fancy trades. Injury chats, all the latest news for injuries comes through here as well. So even, for example, this, Cleary could return early. They're talking about how he might be back round seven, for example, right? So a lot of this news comes through here. It's actually a really good spot for that. And some of the news I don't even have yet, and you guys are sending it through. So we love that. Um, captain chat as well. So who should we captain? Kind of conversations. Um, game day chat. So we're going to have channels for all these different things, but each game will have a channel as well. And then we have the upgrades too. So if you go to the welcome newbies, there's a link here. WAP.com. I can send that link as well. Um, but you can get upgrades to to like the brainstorm, how to play. What's level one? You get all these things. Level two. Get access to the advice hotline so you can ask your specific questions and chat with us directly about your trades and your team and level three which is the gun so they're called cash cow mid-range at gun at the gun level you get access to um like a, a video call we can talk through um sort of fantasy sports and your team your strategy all that sort of thing as well um adam absolutely by the way yes i'm not gonna post a comment up but yep um, but yeah, so that's what that is. I'll drop the link in again for you guys. It's a good channel, just talk fantasy. And I think during the games, it'll be good fun. It's only just launched this week. So yeah, that'll be good. Good time. All right. Last couple of questions. Are you playing? No, no. So I've got 17 exactly this week after my two trades. Uh, one of them is Sam Hughes though. So it's really like 16.5. But I'm not upset. Is Hosking a sell now? Hold them to Hosking for sure. You need the green dots this week. Jaguar and Clotrick, yeah. I think they'll rush Cleary back, but who knows? Yeah, so up, if he's ready after like two weeks and then they have the buy anyway, it might be a three-week injury, which becomes a bit more interesting. We'll see what happens. Should be worried about a buy in round 13. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about round 13 yet. It's Worry about round four. <laughs> round four is the one to worry about. Um, Clearing Wong to Valentinesco. 
yeah, that's fine. That's that's a pretty good move. Thoughts on Cleary and Keeney, Teddy and Carrigan. These are really good trades. I like that. Uh, is this the worst week in fantasy ever or what? There have been worse ones, but not this early in the year. This is absolutely crazy. Um, so all that for free. For the Discord, uh, you can trial the higher tiers. I think I have like a 10-day free trial for the upgrades. So you can try it, test out the upgrades for like 10 days and do it for free for a while. And if you like it, you can stay on. Um, is it okay to be playing 16 this week? Yeah, it's it's 16 is probably average this week. So you're around average. If you can get to 17, that's better. But if you only have 16, don't be too upset. If they go well, you could still move up in the rankings. Uh, do you have an April Fool's plan for next year's team with TJ? Yeah. I mean, next week could screw us even further, right? Um, and surely banking isn't the play this week. Be chance. Yeah, I'm that's what I'm doing. So I'm buying buying players, buying scores this week. I piss Paul, I really like for this week. For example, Turbo, I like for this week. This is the week to rise up the ranks if you can. Is Walsh a sell? Absolutely. Crichton, Flanagan, Fatali, and Galvin is a great pair of trades, but just make sure you have 17 players this week. Uh, see my chance at playing in future weeks, yeah? Maybe this week, potentially. We'll see what happens. All right, cool. Last couple of questions. Is it a good idea to trade Trell for Tedesco? Nope. Nope. Stick with Latrell. Did you get 783 last week? Yeah, you did. So um, I am in a bunch of the leaks. So what happens when you're um, one of the fantasy expert coaches is if someone makes a league and it's not completely full, then it auto fills it with um, expert coaches like me. So if your league wasn't full, then you probably have the casual athlete in your league, which is me. Um, sorry for being here last week, Jack, but uh, at the same time, gotcha. <laughs> Wade Egan back. Yes, he is. And then I'm going to pick two more questions. Uh, yeah, 17. We have Hughes. Yep, I'm with you. I've got Hughes as well. I still think he could pop out at 25 for us. Hopefully we're good. Is Trindle issue for Hines? Good question. So Trindle, uh, his presence make Hines average 10 points less. Um, when, when Trindle's not there, Hines averages more. So, yeah, but Hines has dropped some money now, so you're not too worried about that. Um, anyway, I will, and Pete, nice one, GT. All right, guys, that's the live for today. Um, I'll do a buy, hold, sell video as well. We'll do a couple of other videos. Jump on Discord. I'm on there a fair bit too, so happy to chat there. Um, otherwise, peace out, guys. I'll see you in the next video. All right, easy. Good luck this week. It's going to be chaos. Yeah, thank you. No worries, George. No worries, guys. See ya.